Hey everybody, this is Brad from Johnson Small Engines. We're working on a John Deere D140 and I'm gonna to try to show everybody how I put a transmission drive belt on a D140. All right, first, uh, I always like to show you guys a little bit of the tools that we're gonna to use here. And I kind of put it down on a piece of paper because it was hard, I usually put them on my bench. But the John Deere belt number is highlighted right there. It's a GX20006. And that is directly from the John Deere website. You can go ahead and uh, Go on to John Deere's website and look up all the parts for any John Deere. It's pretty easy. We have a lot of different tools here. Starting from right to left here, we got a half inch ratchet, 3 eighths ratchet. I have a screwdriver for getting the little electrical clip off. I use a silver highlighter to just highlight spots that I need to do so I don't um, lose spot where they are. We have a couple different sockets. Um, this is, these are a 3 quarter and a 5 eighths. And we have a couple of metric ones too. I think this is a 15 or maybe a 19. This is 19, just in case you want to use a 19 on a couple different things. I'm going to use a, an adapter because I'll be using a uh, electric ratchet. And then we have a 15 millimeter for the back guide on the transmission. This is a 15 millimeter. We have to take off. We have to replace one of these pulleys. I forgot what the part number was on this, but like I said, you can go to the John Deere website. They, have, they only have a flat idler and a V idler, and you'll see the reason why we're doing the V idler. This is the transmission drive belt here, and I would just recommend when you take the old one off, um, try to measure it up with the new one just to make sure you got the right belt. It should be pretty close. If not, the other one should be a little bit stretched. And of course, I have my electric quarter inch ratchet that I use. There's a 10 millimeter socket on here, and that is to take the bracket off of the um, side of the engine for the electric PTO. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check out what we're doing. This belt here is pretty, uh, pretty chewed up, and there's a couple cracks in it here. There's one right there, pretty good, and we're just wanna, we just want to replace this belt. I mean, it, it's time, all right? And you can see the, how the belt tension works. It's just by a spring belt tension. That's all it is. All right, first thing I want to do now, granted, I have this up in the air. This is how I do it at my shop. Uh, you guys, I mean, just be real careful if you're going to jack this thing up. Definitely, uh, if you're going to put it up on jack stands, just be real careful. I'm using a, uh, a, a one-ton winch, but... Uh, I've been doing it for a long time. Just, just be careful when you, if you're getting underneath this thing to do this job. I'm going to push the clutch pedal in, which is going to release all of our tension. So you're just going to put the brake on and then lock it in. Now that belt should be extremely loose right now. And it is. All right. Uh, we can just start up at the top of the clutches. This is an electric PTO clutch. We have to get this off. All right. So we have, we have the electrical part up here. Now this electrical one actually has the connector right on the front of the of the electric clutch. And this is where I'm going to put my little screwdriver and I come from the left side in and I'm going to come over and you got to get this little clip right here off and up just enough to push this thing forward and I should be able to just pop this thing forward yep just like that. Now that'll take your that takes your electrical connection off. Now once you get that off come around you're going to use your 10 millimeter socket or wrench this is the bracket here that goes to the clutch that holds the clutch in spot in spot where it's supposed to be. So I want to take this bracket off. And because I was born with one hand, I like to use electric tools. It makes things a lot easier for me. That'll come right off here. Be careful. You don't lose anything. And this one should just drop down and out of the way. Comes right off. Put this aside for now. All right, so you gotta get the electric clutch off now, and you gotta be careful it doesn't drop on you. I'm gonna use an electric ratchet. Again, this is a 5 8 bolt. Now, this is loose right now, and make sure that you have your electric piece off, because your electrical connector off, because if this thing spins, just by accident, you can actually break the wire pretty easily. It's pretty easily uh, broken wire if you're not careful. So I'm go over my tools here, get my 5 8 socket right here. Lay out right here. Alright. Now I'm holding the clutch up just so it doesn't drop. Long bolt, just make sure you don't lose it. And if everything goes as planned, this should drop down, but be careful. You don't want to drop it. Alright. Now everything came off at once right there. I'm pretty sure that this comes out. It does, but I'm just gonna leave it in there because I don't need to take it out. Put it down to the ground and weigh your size. So now, when you look up here, these fingers here, if you don't take that clutch off, 
You're gonna try bending these fingers and you're gonna to wind to bend in a pulley that was behind here. These fingers are now part of the frame. We used to be able to take these off by bolts. So you really gotta pull that electric clutch off. But they do now put grease on the shafts, which I used to never do, and we used to never be able to get them off real easy. All right, so with belts loose here, you gotta come down to your steering. This belt goes between the steering shaft. And I already put on the silver marks. I used a silver marker. You get your steering straight, and I marked right where it comes out because you have to remember where to go. And they come around to the steering wheel, and I try to get the steering wheel with two little marks here. Just so I know when I put it back together again that it's going to be straight, at least I hope it will be. Now that socket is going to be a 19 millimeter or a 3 quarter inch. I'm going to use a 3 quarter inch impact. Somebody's going to have to go up there and hold the steering wheel if you're going to use a half inch ratchet. Just be careful. Get this back, the light back. Now this should come down, all right? And you can take this off. And you just have to be careful that there's a collar in here. It's got to stay pretty close. Now I'm going to go around and pull up the steering. I'm just going to try to get it to come up straight. And I have to come up probably about six to eight inches, just enough to get the belt to come through. And it looks like I have to go up a little bit more. Oh, there, I got it. About six to eight inches, so the steering wheel is sitting up, up top six to eight inches. All right, now going back to the back pulleys here. Now, we have a pulley that we're going to replace here. They are actually 15 millimeter nuts right there. And these guys can be a bear, they can, be, they can stick. So I want to get a 15 millimeter right here. I'm going to use my 3 8 ratchet. And these guys here, now this ratchet here actually extends. Okay, so my ratchet extends and it's just nice to break these guys loose. Now you don't have to take these all the way off, these nuts. You can just get them down to just about ready to fall off because you're gonna be pulling on these. These guys here, you really got to yank on these suckers and wobble them back and forth to get them to come down sometimes. These guys can be real stuck on there. All right. Now I'm purposely not taking the nut off so it doesn't, all right, there it goes. So it doesn't fly off. And then once it's loose, then you take the nut off. Now, this one is being replaced because of, as you can see, it really got chewed up here. Don't ask me why they went to plastic pulleys. They should have stuck with the metal ones. They last so much longer. It wasn't like the bearing's bad. The bearing's not bad, but you can't have a new belt going on. You know, very, uh, I don't know what exactly. Something got wrapped up in there and really destroyed it. But we have a new one, and we're gonna put that on right here. Now when you put these back on again, you have to leave them, leave them loose so you can get the belt back on. So I'm just gonna leave this hanging there, and then we get the lower one. This guy here came off. I'm not gonna take them all the way off. And there's nothing wrong with this pulley. So I'm just gonna loosen them until almost the end. And then if they come down far enough, the belt will drop right out. Just like that. Now this is gonna be the longest task of the whole job. 15 millimeter wrench, tedious. This is a belt guide back here, right here. We've already, I've already taken it all the way off almost. Basically you gotta go counterclockwise and take off that all the way out of the tranny and you gotta get your hand in there somehow take this guy out I'll show you what it looks like that's your guide that holds on the transmission belt in the back right where your fan is that guy there and I'm pretty sure to use locking a lock tight on here because it's tough to come out all the way out so 15 millimeter just be very patient all right just take it out a little bit at a time now the belt should come right off. Now here's the belt. And this guy definitely uh, definitely has some bad spots in him. These are some bad spots right here. And definitely need to be done. Now I'm going to take the new belt and walk out and see if we have pretty much... The old belt's going to be a little bit longer probably because they stretch. And I always just put them together. And it's pretty darn close. So the new belt has a, is a little tighter and it should be a little tighter. Just make sure you check them before you put it on because it's a lot of work. You don't want to get it all together and it not be the right belt. And you go back around the pulley. And before I put that idler guide 
just pull this pull this this guide right here before i put that back in i like to have the belt on and tight with the clutch out before i put that on because it makes it so much easier to put this back on when the belt is taut and you're not fighting against the belt just flapping around so you gotta remember how this goes now this is going to go back up through the steering and we're just going to put it around the front of the engine pulley for now and you gotta just play with the one in the back because it fell off the back line already, the back pulley. So you're gonna play with that. I'm just gonna put it up here for now. And we're gonna put it on the back pulley again. And just follow how it goes. It's pretty straightforward here. And remember, the V of the belt is gonna go in the V of the pulley. The flat of the belt, the flat side, is gonna go in against the flat under pulley. Just remember that. Actually, I think I'm just going to use my air, my uh, electric gun to zoom these guys up real quick. All right, so these guys are tight. Flat on flat, V on V. You go around to the front now. I'm going to put my steering in. You got to be careful with this bushing here that it doesn't pop out. If I'm lucky, it'll go right in. Might have a hand on my camera guy. Maybe he'll help me out here a little bit. Okay, then we gotta get the gear. Now I'm pretty sure the gear has to go on prior to there. So I'm gonna hold that on and then I'm gonna come around with my other hand and my arm. I think I got it on there. Not bad for one hand. All right, we have nut that goes on there. And that was a three quarter or 19 millimeter. And I'm gonna use the three quarter. All right, then you go up to your spots up top. And you line up your spot here, your steering wheel straight. John Deere looks good. And then you come back down here, and I should be lined up, which I am. Okay, so that means the steering is right back to the way it should be. Now, I'm going to put the clutch on, and usually you should put a little never seize on here. And I think I'm, well, it's got a lot of grease on it. Pull the belt down. All right, I think I'm going to take, take the shaft out, make it a little bit easier. All right, so you have on the inside of this pulley, there's a keyway, and it's down, it's down below there, it's inside, all right? Now that keyway runs along with this little spot right here. So you know that's the keyway inside, and you have to put that with the keyway up here. So you put the belt on the pulley, and you try to line up the keyways, and you'll feel it. Make sure you have it tight. Make sure it slides all the way up. You pretty much know you're up when you're, you know your belt's not coming off, it's not going up any farther. And I did take this out of the clutch. So now I have the clutch, same scenario. You have a keyway inside the clutch. That keyway has to line up this keyway. And what I do with this one is I get it close and then I turn the bottom part. This guy here is the bearing, you can, you can actually turn that and it slides right on once you find it. I made that look easy, sometimes that can be tricky. All right, and then you get your bolt, your real long bolt, and you thread it up in there. You should only have about an inch and a half, two inches of play before you, th you know, thread it up as far as the length of that bolt. All right, now we're still, we're loose right there as far as it's swinging around. We gotta put the bracket on the other side, but I'm gonna tighten this up. It's a 5 8 bolt right here. We're gonna tighten it up. Make sure you guys get that tight. There is a specific torque, I think, for all these. So just be careful when you put them back together. We have the bracket here. That's gonna go back in the slot here. And it goes onto the side of the, it's a little, you gotta get them all lined up at once. So you see how that bright, there's a hole there. You can see by the wear signs where it goes. And then the other piece goes into the front of the clutch. 
and it's a 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter socket for this bolt. Tighten that up. Same scenario with my gun. Now I'm gonna let the clutch out so I can see how everything is running. And also, we wanna install the wire for the clutch. And it goes up front. Two pin connector, push it in. And then make sure that the piece on the back is locked in. All right, and this is locked in. You can try pulling it back out again, it should not come out. Now just be careful with these wires. These wires, I'm not real, I'm not real happy about these things leaning down in the steering area right here. But that's where they are, and they actually go up into the frame. I might put a zip tie up there, just to keep that up a little bit better. But they won't fall down any more than that. You don't want them any lower than that, though. You'll get, but your clutch right now, or stationary, you got everything bolted. The last piece we have to do, now under here where everything's running, everything looks real good. New belt on, everything's looking real nice. This piece right here, and it's a, it's a bear. But you gotta find the hole in the back of the tranny. And once you find the hole, start threading it by hand. And eventually the lock, locking, the lock tight on the threads will make it a little bit harder to put on. It's clockwise going in, counterclockwise coming out. 15 millimeter wrench. Now that's the way it should be. So I'm just gonna wrap it up by telling you guys, I hope everybody learns from this. And I learn every time I do this. It's a little bit different every time, but it wasn't too bad. Sometimes these clutches can be a little bit hard getting off. And sometimes these pulleys can be really tough sliding off. They don't put any lubricant on them. And then you just have to make sure, take your patience with getting this guide off. Just be very patient with that guide down there. All right, 15 millimeter, get back on. And if, thank you for watching. If you have any comments, put a thumbs up if you like the video. And uh, we'll go from there. Thanks for watching. Subscribe.